Welcome to Smoky CNC Woodworks. I'm Brian, and today we're going to be doing I'm going to be doing the computer work that I normally do before I run all these projects that you see here on this channel. I've had several requests to see how I was doing the programming, how the computer graphics came about. And so I downloaded some software and recorded the screen as I was doing it and talked my way through it. Uh, I don't get real descriptive on it, on exactly what every little thing does. I was just going to kind of do this as a test run. And because I'm doing it that way, I have separated it from the actual uh, normal video that I let out of when it's cutting out the projects. So if you're not interested in that kind of stuff, I, I'm going to be letting the next video, video go pretty soon, either later today or tomorrow, of what I am cutting out, what I'm making here whenever I'm doing this video, what's going to be cut out. Also, I've had a lot of requests for videos about the build uh, when I built the CNC machine. I've got pictures. I don't have the actual video of it, but I've got pictures, and I will go through and explain how I built it, what it went into putting it together, uh, and just about every aspect of it. That's ended up being a bigger project than I thought. I'm still not done with it. Uh, there's a lot to it, and gathering up all the information where I got things, how much it cost, it's taking some time. So bear with me. I will get that video out, and you guys enjoy this. Okay, here we are in uh, VCAR Pro. This is VCAR Pro 9.5, and as you can see up here in the right hand corner, it's 9.5.1.1 is available. I hadn't downloaded my latest upgrade. This is just a video to try to kind of show y'all how I design the, the graphics and do the programming real quick. It's not going to be a real in depth, a real long video. I'm just going to kind of try to see what kind of traction I'll get on the. Uh, something like this. So the first thing we're going to do is go over here to create a new file. Uh, you can see here that I was, last thing I was cutting was a 4 4 inch by 4 inch. For this one we're going to do about 15 inches wide, 17 inches tall, and let's go with about a half an inch. Okay, next one down to zero position. That means where I start from. You start from material surface. You can start from the bed and move up. I, I like to start from the surface. Uh, X and the XY data position. Most CNCers you'll find will start in the lower left hand corner. That's what they recommend. I, for whatever reason, tried it in the middle at some point and I like it better. So that's just my preference. Uh, this is your resolution. I use high resolution. Uh, pine's fine. So then we'll run up here to the top and go to my files. Y'all may recognize some of the stuff in here, that stuff I've done before. Here we go. I want to do a deer head. Expand it out a little bit. It's not quite the size I need it, but we're going to run over here to this little thing. looks like a bird. It's trace bitmap. Like I said, I won't run through all this. Uh, this is Colors, corner pit, noise filter, bitmap fading. Uh, we're just going to preview it, see what it looks like. It looks like the outline to it. Apply it, close. Then we just click on it, right click, delete, and we take the picture away. So now we'll double click on it, expand it up. I can run over here to this little emblem right here. And this is all your centering possibilities, so I'll just hit the one in the middle with center in all directions. Close that out. When I'm usually cutting the stuff y'all got to see, I'm looking at it like this. Because y'all are actually from the other end of the table, from what I consider the head of the table. I do that because you wouldn't be able to see past the gantry where the router is if I pitched your camera down at my end. So, I just have started doing this way, and I'm kind of used to working on everything upside down. But for today's purposes, we'll flip it back right side up. I just hit undo right over here to the left. You're going to have to excuse my voice. I've been sick for about the last two or three days. It's just one of the joys of living in Oklahoma during season changes. Your allergies and sinuses kill you. So, we've done all this. This is basically all I'm going to show you on this side right now. This is all the design side, which is also known as the CAD side, uh, computer-aided design. 
So I've designed my graphics on this side. So I'll run up here to this little arrow. We'll click on it. This takes us over to the CAM side, Computer Assisted Machining. This is uh, where the G code is spit out that the computer in the shop tells the machine to cut. So you guys hear me talking about in mills and V bits a little bit, or you might see it in my description. Uh, the end mill is what we're going to use today. We highlight our uh, project here. We're going to go over here to pocket toolpath. Okay, so pocket toolpath means it's going to take everything on the inside of this lines out. Let's see if we can back up a little bit here. If we were to do profile toolpath, it would just go either inside the line or outside the line and just cut it out. Just cut a line around it. And the other one I use all the time is V-Bit, the V-Car. The V-Car would make an, an angled edge around this. It would look very neat, I'm quite certain, but it would take forever to clear all this out with a V-Bit. So we're going to use an end mill. And I've got right here, going down 0.12 inches. That's not bad. That'll be that'll be all right. So we're gonna go. I mean, because the material we're gonna use is about 3 eighths of an inch, so I don't want to go too deep into it. So right here on end mill, I've got 0.125. That's an eighth of an inch. Go over here and just verify end mills. So you can see eighth of an inch. The pass depth is eighth of an inch. Uh, my spindle speed is 12,000. I'm actually running a little faster than that. I have my spindle separated from my computer work right now. I don't have a that's just some upgrades I'll talk about later that I'm gonna have to do uh, whenever I do my video over the actual machine. That is coming. I'm gonna do a video over building the machine, uh, probably more than one because it's gonna take a while. I'll do the one over the machine, then I'll do the one over setting up all the electronics and other components. Anyway, so one of the things that you'll notice is a pass step. It's going to pass an eighth of an inch. That's how deep it goes each pass. So whenever you see it doing two or three passes of the same thing, it's just stepping down and not taking too much material at once. It saves on the wear and tear on the machine. It saves from splitting, tearing up the wood, and it saves from mistakes. Step over is the amount if whenever this thing starts clearing it, it starts going left and right. And the distance it goes here and then moves down, that's your step. So your step over on here is 0.05. That's not much. But it'll clear it pretty quickly because we're going to use a bigger bit here in a second, which I'll just show you. So we're using an eighth inch end mill. That's going to be our detail. We've got this selected. This is clearance tool. We're going to use a quarter inch end mill right here. This thing's path is an eighth of an inch deep. It's a quarter inch wide. It does a tenth of an inch each pass. And it's set at 12,000 RPMs. Uh, like I said, that, that is actually set a little higher than that because I've got my machine separated from the router somewhat. I can re operate the router manually from my end and I can turn it up however I like. And I will be changing that in the future. Okay. So we're going to step on down here. This is clear pocket. It's on a climb on a raster. Ramp plunge. Ramp plunge is where when you see the bit go down, it does kind of a little angle down into the wood. That's just to keep it from plunging straight down and doing damage to the material. It just lets it slowly go in at an angle and cut its way into it. Okay, and that's pretty much all we're going to look at right here. So we're going to calculate. So as you'll see, I have my background gray. And I mean, you select that right up here. I can make it whatever color I want. I'm using gray because that's what color our wood is for this project. It's kind of a weathered wood. Uh, so we're going to look at these tool paths. And you see down here at the bottom, I've got pocket one, clear tool path. Pocket two, or the, the second pocket one, is the small end mill. It'll do the detail. So we're going to do both of them at once. What I'm going to do is slow this down quite a bit so y'all can see what I see whenever I'm running a project. <coughs> oh, excuse me.
This is all the clearing and right there, that's the detail, that last little thing going around. That was the little quick one was the detail at the small bit. So now that's what we've seen here. So now I can tilt this up and look, kind of see what I've got. And I can see that it's got it glued. And you flip it all the way around and you can see that it's not anything. I'll just hit Z up here so it'll put it back to where I'm straight up and down. So if I was happy with that, I would split these up and I would click on the clearing toolpath. And I'd go right here to save. I'd click save. Save toolpath as. And I'd go over here to my toolpaths. And I'd name it whatever. And put 25 in there. You can see it right here. Deer head 25 in there. That's so I'll know that it's the clearing toolpath. I'm not going to save it today because I've already got that stuff on here. And then the next one I would click that one off. And then I would click on the pocket one. Which is the smaller end mill. The eighth engine end mill. And do the same thing. I'd click on it. Run over here and you can see it right there, the 1-8 email. And that will do all the detail. So guys, this basically was just a video. Just to, I've had a couple people asking about my step over on stuff, uh, some of the more uh, in-depth computer side of things. And I've honestly just got this software yesterday and to record the screen. So I thought I'd just give it a whirl. I initially was going to attach this to the video probably going to go ahead and just break it off into a separate vehicle just a video just so i can see what kind of feedback i get from it see if it's worth my time doing this and it may not be time for that yet i may not have dedicated cncers on here i mean because i know i've got a lot of people that watch that just enjoy watching the machine run i admit i'm one of those guys too my daughter likes to watch it my dad likes to watch it. i mean i've got a bunch of people that come over and just watch it run and I understand, because it is amazing that the computer can do something like this. Technology is wonderful. Well, guys, that's about it. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe. And I'll see you all next time.